Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the rule of law is a valuable asset, arguably the most valuable one Hong Kong has. It is a valuable asset not because it brings in investment. It may well do, but that is not the point. It is valuable in that it is the best safeguard for our way of life, the best safeguard against the abuse of power by government. To maintain the rule of law is also a costly premise, requiring both vigilance as well as actual resources in support. This speech given in response to the budget is primarily concerned with the latter, namely the actual resources that should be put in to preserve the rule of law in Hong Kong. Resources which are well worth spending, investing, but much of which have unfortunately been neglected from this year's budget. Among, amongst the most important areas of the budget where there are no mention of extra resources that are required for the judiciary. During last year's budget deliberation, I spoke about how our legal system requires resources in order to function and operate efficiently, how justice delayed is justice denied, how for, how for far too long all levels of the judiciary, from the magistrate courts to the court of final appeal, have been staff of resources they need, staff support, and 21st century court facilities necessary to deal with the increasingly long and complex cases efficiently and on a timely basis. The Chief Justice, in his opening of the legal year speech a few months ago, also reminded us of the importance of this aspect, saying that the executive authorities ought to render all necessary support to promote the effective, efficient, and fair administration of justice in Hong Kong. Yet, neither this year's policy address nor the budget gave one word on how the executive branch of government intends to work with the judiciary in the furtherance of its plans for expansion and to cope with the ever-increasing workload and demands. In the meantime, the problems of long waiting times in our courts, plaguing almost all levels of courts, have not only been left untouched, but they have also worsened over the past 12 months. The average waiting time for a civil case in the Court of Appeal is now 138 days, 48 days in excess of the target set by the judiciary. Substantial judicial resources at the Court of First Instance had to be deployed to assist the Court of Appeal by appointing Court of First Instance, instance judges to sit as, as, as additional judge to hear cases of the Court of Appeal. And this is when the Court of First Instance was already well short of resources and manpower in the first place with cases on the civil list having to wait an average of a total of 261 days, a good 81 days in excess of the target. The situation is most alarming and disappointing, especially so considering the repeated calls by the Chief Justice and myself, swift action and additional resources for the judiciary are urgently needed. Legal aid. Of course, justice cannot be held, upheld if citizens do not have access to it. That is why Article 35 of the Basic Law specifically guarantees Hong Kong residents the right to legal advice and access to the courts. That is also why free and equal access to a lawyer has always been a key element of the rule of law. Despite the importance of legal aid in ensuring access to legal services by those citizens who cannot afford it, the current provision of legal aid services is greatly inadequate in several regards. First, a comprehensive review of the financial eligibility limits and the scope of the ordinary and supplementary legal aid scheme as a whole has been long overdue. Last year, LegCo resolved to adjust the limits upward by 3.7%, but this was only to match inflation. What is needed, rather, as the Bar Association has emphasized over the years, is a wholesale reform of the legal aid system. This includes measures such as increasing the FEL for the OLAS for the, from the current 270,000 to the 350,000 level, and the FEL for the SLAS from the current 1.3 million to the 3 million benchmark, as well as expansion of the scope of the scheme to cover more types of cases, including claims against incorporate owners of uh, buildings, claims against property developers in compulsory sales and specific class action cases. Second, last year's adjustment to the legal aid fees, to the legal aid fees 
was also inadequate in that it only alleviates the impact of inflation, but has not reformed the payment structure of the criminal legal aid fee system as a whole so as to catch up with the market rate. With the fees payable to lawyers for undertaking criminal legal aid work amounting only to a fraction of the fees they would charge for a normal case, it is difficult to expect lawyers or lawyers of quality to undertake legal aid, especially criminal legal aid work, for such pay. This will only serve to exacerbate the problem, whether perceived or real, of the litigation being a rich man's game. With as many as 60% of all criminal cases, appeal cases involving unrepresented litigants, there are still many other reform measures that require the administration's urgent attention, establishing an independent legal aid authority, ensuring the correct application of the relevant merits tests, just to name a few. Unfortunately, none of these were taken in the budget this year. On the question of arbitration and the promotion of legal and arbitration services abroad, I've reiterated to the government time and time again that more resources need to be put into the promotion of arbitration services in the international arena. The plan to transform the current a CFA building into an international legal hub designed to attract international legal organizations to come set up branches or sub-branches in Hong Kong is to be welcomed. The beginning of this year, the chief executive announced his policy address that the establishment of a committee dedicated to the support and development of arbitration and mediation services will be set up. But this is not enough. Again, actual resources for the promotion of legal and arbitration services are needed, not more committees. Winning the right to host the International Council for Commercial Arbitration for Hong Kong in 2018 will no doubt put our jurisdiction firmly on the international arbitration map and sealed Hong Kong's reputation as an international dispute resolution center. I urge the Department of Justice and the rest of the administration to put in every effort possible to win the right to host 2018 ICA conference in Hong Kong and to continue to work with institutions like the Hong Kong International Arbitration Center to further promote our arbitration services, both here and abroad. Of course, a legal system can only be as good as its people, and the same goes for the legal system in Hong Kong. However strong our legal institutions, we need good lawyers, a strong and independent legal profession to ensure that the quality of legal services provided in Hong Kong will remain one of the best in the world. To that end, we should not only count on attracting top lawyers to come to work in Hong Kong. Attracting foreign talents is important, but that alone is not enough. We should also put in more resources into the education of young lawyers to ensure that there will be a succession of quality young law graduates coming out of our universities, coming out of universities with the right kind of training, the right kind of mindset, and the right kind of experience that would propel them into successful career lawyers, whether in the legal field or otherwise. Last but not least, that, Mr. President, I would like to mention the case of Hui Ji Wing again which I have done so several times in this chamber. The rest and sham conviction of mainland lawyer Hu Zi Wang once again remind us of the backwardness of the legal system in the mainland and the preciousness of our very own in Hong Kong. As a member of the legal profession, our hearts go out to Mr. Su and his family. More importantly, the case of Hu Zi Wang also reminds us of the importance of our present cause to protect and treasure the rule of law in Hong Kong. We must uphold the rule of law in Hong Kong so that when the moment change, what we have in Hong Kong shall shine in the rest of our nation. But that moment is far and long away that we, looking at the present state of affairs in the rest of the country, we do not hope that we cannot hope that the civic progress of the nation would advance very much very far soon. And this is the very task set upon us, Mr. President that it is a task for the budget that we have seen many measures that are required to be mentioned in the budget gone missing. Measures that are required to promote and protect our rule of law, 
to support our judiciary, to ensure access to justice through the reform of the legal aid system, support for the legal profession, promotion of the legal services and arbitration services abroad. These are all matters which should be given much prominent space and much prominent mention in the budget this year, but they are all sadly missing. Thank you, Mr. President.